Hello friends, today I am going to discuss with you all regarding the cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So the content for today's discussion is why the CPR is important, who should know the CPR, what is mouth to nose breathing, what is mouth to stoma breathing, what is AED, automated external defibrillator, what is CPR for the infants, how to relieve the choking in adults, how to relieve choking in infants. What is compression to ventilation ratio? What are the hazards of the CPR and contraindications for CPR? Let's see this all. Why the CPR is important? Okay, because if you are not applying the CPR on time, then neurological damage will start taking place, and the outcome of the CPR will be very poor if you are delaying the CPR. So, if you are delaying the CPR by say just one minute, the chances of survival will be decreased by 7 to 10 percentage. And that's why CPR is very important to apply on time. If you are providing the CPR on time, it will double or triple the victim's chances of survival post ventricular fibrillation cardiac arrest. And CPR basically provides immediately the critical amount of blood to the heart and brain. Let's see the second question, who should know the CPR? So not only medical, paramedical or the hospital staff, every healthcare professionals should know the CPR, every common man should know the CPR, indeed everyone, everyone should have an idea about the CPR. What is mouth to nose ventilation? In the last CPR part 1 video, I have explained you about mouth to mouth breathing. Today I will be telling you about the mouth to nose ventilation. Here you need to deeper normal, uh, normal, uh, deeper than the normal because uh, the diameter of the nose is small compared to the mouth and exhalation when you are doing you need to apply the great force because the nasal passages are smaller. Second, after giving mouth to nose breathing, remove the mouth from the victim's nose to allow the victims to exhale passively. And after delivering two slow breaths, okay, immediately you need to assess for the victim's circulatory status and when the mouth to mouth breathing is not possible, then only we should go for mouth to nose breathing. For example, in case of mass occupying lesion like a tumor in the mouth. So that's why mouth to nose breathing we need to use. Now what is mouth to stoma ventilation? That means through the tracheostomy tube. Okay, the patients with the tracheostomy can be ventilated directly through the stoma or the tube that is called mouth to stoma ventilation and in some hospitals uh, the patients wear the medical alert tag or the bracelet indicating the stoma is present where you are introducing the breath from your mouth to the stoma. So that has to be applied when there is uh, no possibility of giving the breath through mouth to mouth or mouth to nose. Okay, so in that case you need to apply the artificial breathing technique called mouth to stoma ventilation. Now let us see very important that what is AED automated external defibrillator. So automated external defibrillator has to be used only when the victims has the following clinical signs like no response, no breathing and no pulse. When these three are present we have to use the AED. Now AED has a beauty that it can analyze the rhythm at the same time it can give the cardioversion that means the electrical shock as well. Here. Uh, you need to apply the one electrode pad on the upper right side of the bare chest directly below the collarbone on the patient's bare chest and the other pad you need to apply on the left of the nipple a few inches below the left arm. Now after applying the electrodes you need to analyze the rhythm and you should not touch the victim and for that uh, there is something called as a clear the passage a clear the patient message that you need to clearly uh, you know tell that I am clear you are clear everybody is clear or simply clear so you need to say this loudly after that you need to perform a visual check and then you need to uh, you know give the cardioversion now how to perform the CPR for the infants okay so you need to check for the victim's response and you need to uh, tap here the victim's foot 
okay in adults you tap the shoulder here you need to tap the food and you need to loudly say that are you all right if there is no response you need to shout for the help or else you can send somebody to activate the ems and you should begin the different steps of the cpr open the airway head tilt chin lift maneuver you can go ahead with it check for the breathing but here you should take at least 5 seconds but not more than 10 seconds and uh, you should go with the look listen and feel uh, approach which i have explained in the part 1 video if no breathing then you should give immediately two artificial breath check for the pulse in adults you palpate for the uh, carotid pulse and here you are need to palpate for the brachial pulse if no pulse is present you should start with the cycles of 30 compressions to two breaths and uh, you should draw an imaginary line between the nipples place two fingers on the breastbone just below this line and uh, do not press on the zygoid process while giving the chest compressions and to give the compressions you need to press the breastbone down about one third to one half the depth of the chest bone in adult we have seen around one and half to two inches but here one third to one half of the depth of the chest and you need to deliver the compressions in a smooth fashion at a rate of 100 compressions per minute so this is how you can give the cpr for the infants now how to relieve the choking in the adults so it is very very important when uh, there is a sign of a choking immediately you can perform a maneuver called hinrich maneuver another name for the same is abdominal thrust okay here you need to remember that abdominal thrust should never be applied in the infant okay so abdominal thrust has to be used for relieving the choking in the adults now how to relieve the choking in infants so you should uh, kneel or sit with the infants in your lap hold the infant in a prone face down position with your head slightly lower than the chest resting on your forearm deliver five back slips forcefully in the middle of the back between the infant's shoulder blade using the heel of your hand so here two things are happening infant is in prone position infant in a position where the gravity is assisting for uh, removal of the choking and at the same time you are applying the back slaps as well now here you need to turn the infants as a unit while carefully supporting the head and neck and you need to provide up to five quick downward chest thrust in the same location as the chest compressions but on a back not on the uh, front side of the chest what is compression to ventilation ratio so if there is a one rescuer you should go with the universal compression to ventilation ratio of 30 compressions to two breaths while giving cpr to victims of all the ages and if there is a two rescuer you should use a compression to ventilation ratio of 15 compressions to two breaths while giving cpr to the infants and children now very important and imperative for us to have an idea about what are the hazards of the cpr so while giving the cpr okay there may be a chances of neck and spine injury especially while shifting the victim or transferring the victim from one place to another place second there is a chances of gastric inflation or the vomiting there is a chances of internal trauma if you apply the uh, cpr forcefully you may damage the internal organ there may be chances of fracture like fractures of rib sternum okay uh, clavicles etc so these are some of the hazards of the cpr and the last we'll see what are the contraindications of cpr so as such there is no contraindication of cpr only two things uh, two points that biological death when the person is already expired the person is already dead uh, if you apply the cpr then also you are not going to get any effect so cpr is contraindicated and for some patient okay you will see the dnr tag on their wrist in the hospital where do not resuscitate uh, ba uh, band has been applied so on those patients you should not give the CPR so I wish this part 1 and part 2 video will give you some idea or some insights about the cardiopulmonary resuscitation okay thank you very much